Welcome to another video review. Today we'll be taking a look at the Seiko SBQL001, which is a dress watch from back, way back from 2003, on the bright line of Seiko's Japan domestic market. It's equipped with an 8F33 perpetual calendar engine. Considered as a high-end quartz by some, due to its 20 second per year accuracy. We'll delve a little bit deeper into the movement per se in a short time. But first of all, let's take a good look at this watch, which is pretty exceptionally well made. It is designed as a typical dress watch, it's 37 millimeters, not including the crown. It has a white, pearly white dial, very well made. As you see, the logo is applied, the markers, very well defined, the hands, of course, don't have any loom since this is a dress watch. The only other mark is the perpetual calendar sign and, of course, the Japan made insignia with the type. As you see, it is a day date. I've currently set it to Japanese day of the week because I think it's a bit cool having these kanji characters. Of course, it's also suitable to English. Comes on a steel bracelet, which, strangely enough, for Seiko, is pretty well made, too. It's no secret that Seiko bracelets tend to lag behind the watch case. In this case, too, the watch case is slightly better made, and I must say that this watch is exceptionally well finished. That's the main reason I decided to film this, to shoot this video. Because the finishing on this case is really, really good. I mean, the mirror polish on the polished surfaces The contours are very well defined. You can see the case has the traditional shape, grammar of design shape that was seen in early Grand Seiko's. Of course, you know, Seiko has invented quartz, so this here watch dates back to a very long lineage of beautiful quartz dress watches, high-end dress watches, starting with the 3003 line back in the early 70s. Moving up to the Grand Seiko quartz of today, Seiko has always been in the vanguard of, of quartz technology, although some people will argue that Seiko is a pioneer, but fails to perfect, whereas Citizen, the other Japanese giant, picks up, copies the design, but tends to perfect, you know, the movement, the caliber, and so on, through its Miyota subsidiary. In the case back, you can see the Made in Japan markings. The watch is water resistant to 10 bar. The clasp is very well made. Flips reassuringly. Opens with a simple click. As with any dress watch, the crown is unsigned. 
Can you really see the quality here on the indexes? Well, these spectacular things. You can probably see myself reflect on it. I haven't seen finishing like that on anything outside the ground quartz, qual ground seiko quartz. And this watch has been called the baby ground seiko quartz. It's definitely better finished than any sharp watch I've seen. And on a par at least with an SD GM. So you can safely place it on the upper mid range in the seiko lineup. Braces, as you can see, the brassing is pretty well executed. There is also the polished surface. The Japanese seem to have a fetish involving small polished surfaces mingled with brass surfaces on the bracelet. I don't think the bracelet really suits the design all that well. I would prefer if it had, you know, either larger polished surfaces or no polished surfaces at all. This watch definitely will sign on a nice black high quality leather belt. You've noticed the Cyclops. The glass is sapphire, another rarity for Seiko. Well, not a beautifully executed watch. Unfortunately, the line is no longer produced. Now, that's the same, really, because, and let's go a little bit deeper, in the 8F 32 and 33 calibers. This is the day date. There's also a simple date version of the same caliber. Then there is the 8F 5.6 version which has a GMT hand and that's probably a little bit well known with collectors since it's the caliber that's used on the previous generation Alpinists stunning watches I witnessed a limited edition Alpinist with the ATF 56 getting sold in Japan for $2500 the other day that was the Limited SS A double S version with a stunning blue dial. But going back to history a little bit, the ATF line is, as I said, considered by some to be a high end quartz, mostly because on paper the timekeeping specifications rated at plus or minus 20 seconds per year. And that's due to the crystal oscillator working at, at 192 kHz versus 32 kHz that you usually see with typical quartz. So by raising the crystal frequency six times, Seiko has managed to raise accuracy six times. This obviously costs a lot more energy-wise, so it has fitted a huge battery. I'm sorry I don't have a spare to show you at the moment, but it's roughly the size of the brass surface on the case back. It's this huge. And this huge battery can hold up to 10 years, so you have really a quartz engine that expands on what's nice about quartz, limited, you know, very limited uh, maintenance costs, very high accuracy, just 20 seconds per year on this one, 10 year interval and a perpetual calendar, meaning that you don't have to do any date switching if a month has 30 days or 29 days or whatever. This one is set up to 2100, I believe, and you set it only once with every battery change. It's not an easy procedure, battery change on this one, because you have to press some internal switches in order to set the perpetual calendar correctly. 
but you can get the hang of it and do it yourself there's a couple of lovely videos online on how to do this it's not really that hard and you can see this finishing is just spectacular you can see myself reflecting there I was lucky to get this one you know, near mint condition where it was just a hairline there because it is very stunning words. So back to the ATF. 33. We have a 10 year lithium battery. Higher accuracy than ordinary quartz. And a perpetual calendar. Meaning that you only reach to fix something on the watch twice a year with the daylight saving time change. Other than that, it should be okay. Now, as I said before, it is rated to 20 seconds per year, but unfortunately, very rarely do you see a timepiece that actually achieves this 20 seconds per year. And this is a common problem with this middle range, high accuracy quartz watches, because they are not thermocompensated. Seiko actually states in the manual that if you want to hold them to their word for the 20 seconds per year, you need to be wearing the watch 10 hours per day, every day. And that's mostly because when you are wearing the watch, you are exposing the case pack to your own temperature, the 36.7 degrees Celsius, so the watch doesn't experience with large temperature changes but are normal from day to day and from day to night, I'm sorry. Well, positional variation is not an issue, so it's mostly temperature. And that's a common issue. You can see it in the boulevard watches, the precisionist movement. Precisionist movement also has a higher frequency higher frequency crystal oscillator like this one plus the added bonus of the constant sweep of the second hand it also has a huge battery but since the constant sweep consumes a lot of battery it only lasts for about two years versus the 10 years for this one and as is the case here Usually you cannot achieve the stated accuracy on this, on that one too. Although the Miyota movement certainly has an issue of general degradation as time goes by. Whereas the problem with this one is a little bit more complicated. It seems that it's not thermoregulated, if I may say so, meaning that when it exits the factory under ideal conditions, it may well achieve 20 seconds per year, but it's not really regulated as it should have been. So basically you get a watch that is very accurate as to the difference that it actually has every month. Say this one is accurate to almost exactly 9 seconds per month and if I could have, if I was able to regulate it somehow, regulate the movement, I would probably easily achieve the 20 seconds per year because it's very stable in those 9 seconds per month. I don't know if I if you catch my drift. Whereas the Miyota movement, the precisionist, just degrades over time. It doesn't keep stable time difference. You may be gaining 10 seconds one year, gaining 20 seconds the next year, 30 seconds the year after that. Whereas this one is stable, but it's not regulated the way you could regulate, say, an automatic but also is stable day in, day out. 
Other than that, it's a very practical dress watch. Because as I said, you just pick it up and wear it. And you only get to change the battery, you know, every 10th year or so. You literally can forget it in a drawer for a couple of years. You can pick it up. Maybe, you know, change the daily saving time and you're good to go. And that's what the dress watch should be really. I don't see the point of automatic high-end dress watches. That's the only wear, you know, a couple of times per month. Why go to all the trouble for that? So, as I said, a very stunning watch in person. I hope you can... I have conveyed this in this video. It's a pity I don't have a nice black leather strap to put it on. I'm sure the watch would shine even more because the case is really, really lovely. It's a beautiful dress watch. It's an attention grabber. And friends who have seen this watch in local get-togethers or other watch enthusiasts have been blown away. And they are saying, well, if a regular Seiko can achieve this level of finishing, I wonder what a Grand Seiko can do. Very impressive watch piece. For sure. Now I'll be cutting away for the obligatory wrist shot. Five centimeters across, or seven and a quarter inches. As you can see, the watch, you know, it's a dress watch. It's okay for my wrist. Kind of wish it was bigger, but that's just, just me. Bracelet looks apart. It's pretty comfortable. And the watch is just stunning. You can see the finishing, the level of quality on the hands, on the indexes, the way it catches the light, as every higher end Seiko does. And it reflects back every photon available. It really is a stunning dress piece, piece, and it's a real pity I don't have an appropriate strap for it. Very practical watch, easy to wear, large battery time, perpetual calendar. Just pick it up and wear it. And this concludes this uh, brief presentation. As always, your comments. Your questions are welcome. Thanks for watching and subscribe for any more videos to hit this channel.